out of the top of her head. Wow. Yeah, it's in the, the Vancouver Island style that I saw over there. I saw incredible art over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing to me how much it, it's very resembles the Aborigines from Australia and the Moray and New Zealand. Oh, does it? There, there are same color schemes and designs. It's really? Amazing. I didn't yeah. know that. You could tell they were related. Wow. Boat cultures. Well, take care. Well, me and the guys just stopped at a at an Indian shop. Penobscot. Ash splints. Dude, this place is outrageous, huh, Shane? Yeah, it's crazy. Micmac. Uh, what do we got? Oh my gosh! Look at all this stuff. It's just... Wow. Wow, dugout canoe. Dude. Yeah, birch bark over there. Yeah, birch bark. Holy cow. Dude, this place is special, man. I guess. Look at the uh, stone axe heads over here. Did you see those, Mitch? No, I haven't got there yet. Dude, the, the, the boxes over here are out of control. Like the baskets, the basket work. Ash splints. Wow. Turtle shell rattles, bones. Look at this one. This is one big piece of bark. Pack baskets. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> now I wish I stopped here sooner. <laughs> War clubs over here. Scott made 1885 ash splint pack basket from Skowhegan. 1885? So this is like, a, this side is all like, it's like a museum, huh? I think so. Well, it is a store and a museum, so. Dude, this is 1885 on it. 1840s. Oh my god, what? Wow. I mean, look at the leather. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my. 1940. Look at the condition that's in. He's got pictures of him splitting bark here, too. Yeah, looks like he puts the the piece through that. Look at that. He has like a like an anvil he built. He's splitting left and right off of it. You know, it. it's probably like one of those spoon mules where you where his feet you know split the two pieces of wood. There's a fulcrum point and it closes in on it. It so closes in exactly. With yeah, least pressure with his knees. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. This is unbelievable. Museum section back here is amazing. You've been collecting for over 50 years. Wow. Been collecting for over 50 years. I'm surprised. They're like you. Drive by. Yeah. What is this mortar and pestle? Oh my god. Manny needs a pound and crushed corn and a meal and flour. Yeah. Look at this moose call. Wants it to stay in perpetuity. Oh, wow. A couple daughters and some grandkids. Are that bunch of mokotagans. Wow. It's unbelievable. It gets more narrow inside. Oh, yeah? How many snowshoes have been made with these things? Oh, my God, dude. Just I can't. Wild. 1870s. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. 1870 mokotagans? What? Father son bow, dude. I've heard of these and I've seen drawings of these. I've never actually seen one in real life. I saw Indians that came up with that father son bow. Really? Yeah, I see that. It's their version of the compound bow. Yep. Oh, I've seen drawings of them, but yeah, all all the calls. Wow. I've never ever seen one in real life before. Looks like uh, it's tied with sinew. Yep, it is. 
the only th the only thread the Indians used. Yeah. Oh man, look at these Mokotagans. See what? Books, uh, the, the books like the one you've got in the truck. <laughs> yeah, the book I'm reading in the truck right now, he's yeah. selling, he has over there, I saw it. The too. He has the other ones I was talking about saying I wanted to find somewhere and buy. Yeah, yep, he has it. Me and Shane were just laughing about that. Incredible collection. Incredible, man. Look at the pipes. Eighteen thirties. Ash splint. Storage basket. Wow, look at all these artifacts. Whoa. That's just incredible. The amount of work that you know he put in to curate this. Yeah, this museum is just unbelievable. Pretty pretty well to see that level of dedication, interest, and respect, you know. Mm-hmm. These Indian artifacts found in Maine. I can't get over these knives, man. Just, each one has got a little bit of different character to it, you know. And this front one is real worn down. You can tell it's been restrung a couple times. The blade's a little stressed right on the edge. They've sharpened it, not quite perfectly, but you can tell it's real sharp still. <clears throat> it says that uh, the 655 knife scrapers of broken points were found in the town of Franklin, Maine. On coastal Butler Point, which lies between Egypt and Taunton Bays, during the years of 1950, 60, and 70. It is. Yeah, that bow has a lot of wear on it, man. This is. Look at that gouge. I can't believe this is here. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Lit archaic points. Yep. Mm -hmm. You better believe it. Side notch. Oh my goodness. I mean, he's got stuff from different parts of the world as well. Mexico, Peru. Mm hmm. Yeah, not just up here. Unfinished object found in Rehoboth, Mass. Stone axe heads. Dude, look at that. There's so much stuff I can't even film it all. This is 1815. That's from Kent, Connecticut. Look at these snowshoes. Oh my goodness. These look like Abenakis. They are. 1960 modified bear paw, yep. These are mine. Like I have in the truck, the Hurons. 
See that? See how that's the same ones I have? Like the exact same, yeah. same design, right? Yeah, because yeah, I bought vintage ones yeah. made on a reservation. The Hurons. Because uh, I believe that my grandfather's family were Huron. It's hard to tell because um, my uncle who knew it all ended up passing away. Oh, no big deal. It's just a birch bark canoe here. <laughs> right on. It's all good. Just a boat. Just a boat. Made of bark. Sown with spruce. No big deal. Whew. Was this a fish trap? What is this? 1880s. It's an eel basket. Oh wow, look at that design. Look at that. So they can't get out. It has like a... The splints at the end. Wow, ingenious. Love it. Talk about a dream to make a to make a birch bark canoe. To have one would be would be quite a dream. To make one even more so. And next to it, a dugout canoe. What? This thing is huge. Now I'll see the Indian from the St. John River in Maine. It says. 12 foot long slender dugout racing canoe from 1800s, made from one solid maple tree, not cedar as some of them were. Thumb thick. Wow, 1800s. <laughs> dugout canoe. Dude, this is, this is a dream come true to find one of these. I just can't even believe this. Oh, that's the paddle. What? The paddle is in that sheath. That hide sheath. What? Wow. I didn't realize that. It's the back of the paddle. Oh, I didn't see the paddle over here on this hide. I didn't even notice it. Wow. Dude, I... Whew. I've got, like, goosebumps, man. Whew, man. Vancouver Island. A hater. Ooh. A hater. They were a dangerous tribe over there. So I'm not good, doing a good job, buffalo bladder. I'm not doing a good job filming. Wow. 
What's up? My mind is blown with this place. I can't believe it exists. I can't believe it exists. It's, it just never ends how amazing this museum is. It's amazing. There's baskets here from the 1800s, a dugout canoe from the 1800s. I didn't see where that, um, where that, uh, the birch boat was made. Steam bent sled frames. This place is outrageous. Dude, I can't even believe this place. It's amazing. <laughs> I've gotten goosebumps, man, like looking at some of these things. That dugout canoe is from the 1800s, it says. We have a graphic novel of King Philip's War comic book. That's that up pretty cool. No, they don't. Dude, that's my jam, man. That's the stuff. I can't even believe this place. Never ends. How cool it is. King Philip's War. Met a comet himself. There you go. Wonder if it mentions Wam Sutter in it. I'm sure it does. Mm -hmm. it has to. I visited um, some of the uh, locations that the war happened in. Yeah. Mm hmm. Maintaining the Sioux Way. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> Brain tanning this way. Step by step. Nice. Are you familiar with brain tanning? Oh yeah. Yeah, I've done it. I brain tanned a rabbit pelt once. Mm. Some of the people uh, were looking at me strange at the camp out. I was cracking cracking its skull open, getting the brain. People were like, what are you doing? Yeah, let me show you a shirt in there that's been brain tanned about a hundred years ago. Okay. Love to hear it. <clears throat> shirt right here. Feel it. It's a hundred years old. Wow. That's that's why the Indians brain tan. You know, Incredible. It, it lasts and lasts. Oh you can God. put that in a so washing soft. machine, take it out, let it dry. It's like a chamois. Yeah. Wow, yeah. oh, that's amazing. Look at the stitching. Right. Look at the muse. The embroidery. Moose calls. Yep. Yeah. Do you know how they use those? I've used one. Just last fall. Up in well, you don't know how the Indians used it. No. no. They call from their canoe, then they reach in the water, Yeah. then they let the water out, now they're thinking, <clears throat> making believe that a moose, a male in the woods is looking for a female who's uh -huh. peeing in the water. Uh-huh. Yeah. Bring the moose to you instead of you to him. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm Mitch, by the way. Nice to meet you. Mitch? Yeah. Tom Sear. Tom, nice to meet you. Same here. You see how Paul de France This place is special, man. Yeah, yeah we you saw the, uh, see the crooked knives in there, Mitch? I did. Yeah. I was Indian blown Island, away. Indian Island State Police badge that I got from my wife a few years ago for kind of a Christmas gift. She was surprised to see that. And last year, some state cop was in here, and he looked at that, and he walks right back there. He goes, he goes, where the hell did you get that? So I told him I got an antique shop, and he says, I used to be a state cop over on Indian Island. He said, I had six of those in my drawer, and I left them behind. I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> I said, well, I paid dearly for that one in the antique shop, I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, now he knows where one ended up. He's mine now, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe this place. No, me neither, man. Like, I just. You know, wow. that's main for you, though. You know, sometimes you get off the beaten path just a little ways and you find these hidden treasures. That's yep. One of the most unique items, I think, is in here is, is yeah, a yeah. seal bladder doll. A seal bladder doll. Yeah. <laughs> that old gray ugly thing. Seal bladder doll. Yeah. Wow. 
They didn't have Toys R Us, so they did what they could. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Pretty different, huh? Yeah. That, uh... Oh, dude. This Snow is goggles. How, this is how yeah. Indians fished. They put that in a stream and, you know, Indians don't... Fish don't back up. He was just talking about fish traps and things that yeah. uh, natives use. Yep. Yeah. Dude, these... That dugout canoe, like... In this this birch bark canoe, it, it I, I couldn't it just it like stopped me from breathing for a second. I just couldn't believe it. Like yeah. I've never seen a dugout in real life, you know, and I just uh, I just couldn't believe it. I still can't believe it. I had some Boy Scouts come in here and I tell them about the canoes and stuff, and, and I tell them there's no metal in there. Go, that goes, oh look, there's square nails in there. I said, <laughs> well, if you got a magnet in your pocket, see if it'll stick to that wooden peg. Exactly. Square pegs. Yeah. Yeah. That was commissioned. She had that made by a gentleman in upstate New Hampshire yeah. who makes canoes the Indian ways. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Oh, I don't that's, that's beyond me now. That was before her and I met. Right. He, um, he did a what, good job. Do you know what they do with their canoes in the winter? What? Dump them uh, underwater? They, yeah, they sunk them in the yeah. lakes, and, lakes and ponds. Yeah, they did. Hopefully below the ice level. Mm -hmm. and then when the ice is gone, first come, first serve. <laughs> you know, you, somebody got there we park our canoe. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw her, uh, the paddle. It's actually in this, this sheath right here. It's like it blew my mind that the paddle was in there. Oh yeah, underneath all the paddles inside the coyote pelt. It sure is. Oh, wow. Yep. Yep. Unbelievable, man. The stuff that's in here is like just incalculable value to me, you know? Yeah, and she wants future generations to see this. You know, she, a couple of her daughters thought that they'd be able to have an auction when oh we pass God. on, but no, that ain't gonna happen. That's be the scariest thing I've ever heard. Right. Yeah. We're, we're trying to save up for Buffalo that big cabinet over there against the wall. Yeah, we uh, we need, we need to save up to get another one or two like that because we've got stuff upstairs that we can't display because we just don't have the room for it. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, work. This place is so colorful. Yeah. yeah. They usually, <clears throat> I think they used to make the beads. Some of those, I don't know about these, but some of them used to be made out of porcupine quills. Uh. Yeah, the uh, these I'm not so sure. No, they they didn't. They used the porcupine quilt to wrap things. Uh, trying to see. Chain, look at the carving on that. Look at this. What? Look at the skill. They would hammer the porcupine oh, quilt flat. Oh, mm -hmm. here. The, the tail, the fringe there. That's all porcupine quilt. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the items in here. It's, well, it's mind blowing. I like this paddle. Mm -hmm. in the Amazon. Bora village on the upper Amazon yeah, River even, in Peru. Wow. This came from the same village. It was all carved out of one stick, except for these seed beads. And it was a shaman stick mm -hmm. that he would beat on the ground to, to, to do his uh, religious thing. Mm -hmm. Wow. A few years ago, a man from upstate New York came here because he had heard about our, our museum and he, was, he goes around the world taking pictures of masks of indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And he, he liked the ones we've got over there on that wall. I saw those. And this one here. Oh, whoa. He, <laughs> he came, took the pictures, then he called me a couple weeks later and I just happened to be busy as hell in the shop. And yeah. I couldn't talk to him on the phone, but he quickly told me that when he processed the picture of that one, there was a spirit all around the whole mask that wow. came out in the processing. When he, in the picture. Yeah. And, <laughs> 
right after I hung up, I said, oh, sh I should have told him to send me a copy, you know, yeah. it would have been great yeah. to put it right there. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That is quite the ladle there. What's that for syrup, Maggie? What does it say? Hand carved ladle. Dipper. Dipper. Really tin cones. Wow. And that served a village for sure. In a Cherokee used dippers like this. I think they cut. Gorn, yeah. Yeah. I really like this mask. This little snowshoes are nice, huh? Yeah, child size, huh? Yeah. Those tufts on there is they put that there not for decoration but when their their snowshoes are leaning on their wigwam uh, if there's a little snow on the ground you know the color will show up through the snow so they can find their snowshoes it's hmm. a good idea especially where the kids could leave them somewhere yeah not quite as disciplined yeah yeah I have a couple well, I have one set like that for my for one of my kids and I have a set of uh, Hurons for myself, actually in Gary's truck outside. But, uh, you know, all traditional babiche. Yeah. Old school like those. That's that's the kind of stuff I use. This, this place is unbelievable. Wow. It's incredible. It really is. I mean, this fishing creel looks brand new. In 1910. If you didn't look at the letter, you would never know. Yep. That basket that it's on, the pack basket, do you know why they made them like that? They made them shaped like that so they don't fit in the gunnel of the canoe so when oh. they go over rough water it yeah. won't tip and it'll stay right there in place. Mm. Yeah, because the Adirondack style is straight down, right? Yeah. And this is the... Mm. I love this birch bark grill. Yeah, no. Oh, oh my gun. That's amazing. You, you've got to make yourself one for your fishing. Indeed, I love that. <laughs> Problem is, is finding a birch tree yeah. big enough to harvest the bark from to yeah. do it. Yeah, it's getting, getting pretty <clears throat> rare now. Yeah, you can go to New Hampshire or something. Go to the mountains. It's a lot of downed birches over there, like when I was, when I hiked in the mountains. Yeah, I saw a huge one over on the Golden Road over by Mount Katahdin. Mm -hmm. I think this needs to come home. That's just crazy, right? It's like, oh wait, Mitch told me that whole story. Oh, wait, they have a graphic novel about the whole story. <laughs> exactly. And it's out of print. These are probably the last two left. Exactly. Uh, Within a 20 foot square area, picked up more than you could consume in a year and a half. No kidding. Oh, I couldn't believe how many fish had in there. Just that one spot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Butter and um, the yeah. nearest way I ever had them was deep fried. Mm. They had deep fried. Wow. Oh. Mm. That is deep fried. Got it pickled and sauteed. Pickled, yep, sauteed. Those are the Maritimes, times, the Micmac. Like I do too, but they don't like me. No? No. In my old age, I've developed arthritis, and it's one of those vegetables that people with arthritis shouldn't eat. Oh, really? Yeah, if you, if you cook them improperly, they, something about the way they release, I think, vitamin A or some, some vitamin, if you cook them improperly, it'll, okay. it'll make you feel bad. Yeah. Could be birch too. Birch gets figured, figured like that too, I guess. I think it's huge. There's a an antique shop and it's getting all kinds of fire around it in really bad shape. And the guy goes, oh, 250 bucks for the. I said, well, I've got 100 bucks right now. You want it? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny how money talks and bullshit walks. Yeah, huh? you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Watching downstairs doing laundry, so I threw it in the tub. I got a buffalo robe there in the dugout canoe I'm willing to sell. Bunch of pelts. Arctic fox. Red fox. Rabbit. Badger. Silver fox. Wow.
Bobcat. <laughs> Arctic Fox, dude. Unbelievable. It's done so well. Dude, Arctic Fox, too. Yeah, super soft, right? Yeah, it is. There's a badger. Some really nice pelts there. Back two months later, without him, yeah. she walked right in. She she turned around in the middle of the museum. Sometimes she goes, "Wow, how come I, I feel different now?" And I mm -hmm. said, "Well, I asked her about her boyfriend because he looked a little squirrely anyway." Said, oh, I got rid of him. I said, "Well, the spirits are happy that you did because you were able to go in the museum." And she she was tickled pink. She spent an hour and a half in there. Oh. I'm taking one last, one last look, guys. <laughs> one last look. This is it. This is the rest of the trip. We're right. just staying. This here. is it. This is it. You can leave me here. Pick me up on the way back. I'll be camping out back. <laughs> <laughs>